Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignDetectives.com. Well, it's finally here. Well, it's not quite here, but we're taking a look at the Divi 5. This is the alpha version, so it'll be released fairly soon. And it just gives you a feel for what it's going to do. Now, the layout here is a little bit different. But it's supposed to be ultra fast and ultra streamlined. If we look at an original Divi page, we've got our sections, we've got our rows green and our modules dark right there. We've got our little purple button at the bottom where we've got our wireframe view and our various responsive views. Save draft or publish. We've got our layers and search bar right there. If we look at the new version here, as you can see, we've got a little bar to the left hand side there. We can add new layouts over here. And it looks like they've added some layouts too. There's 2600 odd of them here. And it's exactly the same deal as with the other one. You search for whatever it is you're trying to build a website about. Then you can audition and use various layouts here. Let's just turn that off. And from the look at it, it, it is actually responding quite quickly. We've got our layers over here. If I click on it, it's going to pop out with the layers there with our old one. We had our layers over here and it pops out into its own little thing. Here we've got wireframe view. And again, that's pretty good. And of course, once we're in here, we can go in via the back end. Now, if you click on any of these modules, if you click on a row, it takes you to the row settings. We've got it set up as blue at the moment. Click on the section, it'll take you to the section settings. Or we can move this around wherever you want. We've got our various tablet and phone options there. But one thing I've noticed, they've moved the hover instead of actually on each individual item. It's right here. So if we click on that, it'll give us a hover version. We've still got the design and the advanced tabs over here. Everything looks fairly similar here. CSS ID in classes. It's only two things that they've got there. Custom CSS. One thing that worries me here, I'm sure it's just because this is a pre-release version. I'm not seeing the freeform CSS tab and I really, really like that. I use it an awful lot. We've got our conditions, visibility, transitions, position and scroll effects down here. And again, I'm not seeing any scroll effects. Let's actually go into a module itself. That's pretty quick getting in there. Let's go with the advanced and the scroll effects, see what we've got. We've got sticky position here. It's sticking to the top there. That's fine. But I'm not actually seeing the scroll effects themselves. They probably just haven't added those. I hope they're going to keep those. Again, that's a nice little feature to have. Let's just turn that back off. Now here we've got three little settings, action icons on hover. With that highlighted, it's going to show the little action icon wherever you hover over. If you take that off, it's not going to show that. You just click on it and it's going to bring up the field right there. Next little icon down. Let's get rid of this. Parent action on hover. If I leave that highlighted, if we hover over something, you'll see it also highlights the row and the section. If we turn that off, it's just going to highlight the module that you're actually on there. Now we've got X-ray here. On, it'll show you the actual borders of everything that you're looking at here, each module, row and section. If I turn that on, you'll see. It puts a little line around them so you can see where everything is. We've got some tools down below here. You can switch it from desktop to tablet to phone and wireframe view here. And it's setting the default value. So this is what you see whenever you load the page. Hover mode. It's going to save after every action. Last used position. And it's going to give you a choice when you log in to build from scratch or add a template or clone an existing page. I, I like that giving a choice but turning this off if you've got a particular workflow that's going to work really well but for me that all works well and of course below we've got a little question mark we get rid of that 
And there's a bunch of little tutorials right there. Great. Well, it all looks very good. Like I say, it's going to take me a little bit of time to get used to the positioning, but not much time. And it does seem to be pretty responsive. I'd like to see it on my own hosting. I've got pretty fast hosting there. We've got a night and day mode up here, so you can switch it from a dark background to a light background. We've got a portability icon here, so we can import and export layouts. Obviously, we've got a trash can if you want to clear the layout. We've got a save to library or add to library there. We can exit right here. We can preview and save here. Now, as this is an open demo, I'm sure it won't let us save much here. Let's just add a new module. Modules it looks slightly different if we look over at our old one when we add a new module here. It pops out with our little friendly purple box, which I've got very used to over the years. But this is the updated version. I'm sure they've taken away some of those graphics just to make things a little bit quicker. Don't see any new modules. I've been looking through here, but that's fine. We've got plenty to deal with. I do like some of their updated icons though. And we've got the option to add from library here, but we've got nothing in our library. I wonder if we can save. Let's just try saving something to our library. I'm going to hit the little three dots here. Here's save to library. I notice it's not actually on the bar itself there. And you've got your global options there. Let's just save it to the library. Yeah, it's not going to be let, let me as it's a development page. That makes perfect sense. We'll just add a couple of call to action modules and see what happens. There's a call to action. Looks very similar. It's got the same background there. No need to click on the little cog. It already opens it up for us here. And again, you can resize this and reposition it just like the old one, which is great. And again, the button's not going to show up until we put a link in for it, I'm sure. This all looks very familiar here. Let's put in the default button for us. Uh, we can change our background here. For some reason, I'm not seeing a red there. Let's have a look at the drop down. Barely a red. Well, we can put in our own red. I wonder why they've omitted that. Not that it matters. FF0000. That's a red. Turn that background red right there. Well, red certainly works with it. <laughs> Don't know why it's been uh, omitted from their little color bar right here. Design wise, we've got all the same things here. Not seeing anything new there. Like I say, it does seem to be working fairly quickly. But for a real test on this, Like I say, I'd like to see it on my own hosting and see how quickly it responds there. So all in all, it's looking fairly positive. I like the layout. I like the speed. Like I say, it will take me a little bit of time to get used to the tools being in different places. But we've got mainly the same options here. We've got our little clone button there. And I've also noticed they've got their little plus, the little handle that you usually drag things with it. On this new one, you just click on the item itself, hold the button down, drag it and drop it. I've got that little row stuck to the top there, obviously. Let's see if we preview this. It'll give us a preview. I'm going to... Yeah, there's no preview available and save is not available to obviously for this page. But there we have it, guys. There's the new version of Divi and the new builder layout. Now, to me, it looks pretty smooth and pretty good looking. Not sure if I'd go for the dark version or the light version. Nice little option to have either way. I'll be looking forward to this coming out. There's been a lot of news about it, a lot of hype, what have you. I'll be very interested to get my hands on it. So there we have it, guys. There's the difference between the Divi 5 builder and the original Divi 4 builder that we've got here. 
Now I've used this Divi 4 builder for well, as long as it's been out now. I've been working with Divi since version 2. I like it. I haven't got a problem with it. It's a little bit bulky. And if they solve those problems with this here, we will see. And like I say, the real test is when we can save this on our own hosting and check it for speed and things like that. So I'll be looking forward to getting my hands on this so I can do some real tests. And as soon as I do, obviously I shall make some videos. So there we go, guys, new Divi 5. A little first look for you at their builder. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and webdesignertechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.